Hi and welcome to another video. Uh, following on in my uh, Home Assistant Solace Inverter Automation journey. Um, this one um, should be pretty short um, and it's literally about um, a little um, improvement I hope that I've made in order to facilitate better cooling of my Solace Inverter. I've got a Solace um, 3.6k 5g hybrid inverter which is passive cooled so that means it's got no fans inside it um, so what i um, you know in the, in the middle of summer i was concerned about the thing overheating my inverter um, actually lives in a cupboard under my house um, where it's it's generally pretty cool but um, you know if we get a summer like last year hopefully um, where we get temperatures you know in excess of 40 degrees i thought maybe um, I could do something to help improve the longevity of the, um, the inverter and help keep it a little bit cool. I must say um, summer seems a really long way off at the moment as I make this video. Uh, it's currently chucking it down with rain for about the 15th day in a row and it's um, anything but warm but I live in hope. So um, for those that have watched my previous videos um, a little while ago I actually installed a um, a Shelley clamp meter uh, in the cupboard where um, where my inverter lives because I wanted to get a better picture of um, what energy was going in and out of the grid. Um, and the although the inverter um, obviously can measure grid import and export, what I wanted to do was um, actually get the feed coming from the meter itself for my own import and export readings. So um, yeah, a little while ago. Uh, installed this little Shelly clamp meter. It's in a waterproof box, you can see, um, and um, I've got that, you know, set up in my uh, in my Home Assistant dashboard, and it's feeding this power import export gauge. I also use it for on my energy dashboard to get the values for um, my uh, my energy import and export, so I can work out what I'm what I'm paying for electricity and so on. So one of the um, one of the features of the, the Shelly clamp meter is it does have um, a switched output on it, which you can use to control um, a relay to turn something on and off. Um, but it can actually supply up to two amps itself. Um, so I thought, I wonder if I can um, if I can use the output from that um, little Shelly meter to drive um, just a couple of um, of AC fans um, just to to keep my inverter cool. So I, I purchased 300 millimeter fans. Um, here we go. I literally got them from eBay. They were about 10 pounds each. Um, all I've done is um, cable tied them together um, and um, sort of loomed the wires uh, together and put them in a little connector block, um, which you can see where well, there's a little junction box I've got there feeding into my trunking. And then um, a little bit of... Uh, you know, twin and earth cable will be feeding up through my trunking up to the uh, the Shelly clamp meter. Here we go. Um, so I'm taking the neutral from the neutral uh, feed in uh, for the clamp meter, and the positive is coming off the uh, the O terminal, the output terminal there. Now those fans, um, I think they draw something like yeah, um, 80 milliamps each. So um, absolutely no problem at all with the with the Shelly meter supplying all three of those um, as well within the uh, the um, the two amp range there so that's uh, that's absolutely fine so um, what I wanted to do was to literally just get these um, these fans to turn on when my uh, inverter reaches a certain temperature and get them to run for a certain time um, to reduce the inverter temperature so really straightforward um, we've got you know all of the um, all of the components we already need to make that work in a home assistant automation because um, my clamp meter is already integrated so if I was to have a look in uh, my settings and devices uh, entities we can see we've already got our loads of Shelly devices um, and we can see um, the two channels on my uh, on my clamp meter. If I went into developer tools and states, we could have a look and see all the different um, 
Shelley Sensor, um, you know, and entity states. If I look at um, the switch, oh, if I could type, we'll find the Shelley switch somewhere. There we go. So there's a Shelley switch there. I could have given it a more meaningful name. I've only got one of them, so I wasn't wasn't too fussed about that. And we can see that the current state is off. As a little bit of fun, when I was um, setting this up, I just went into um, the entity itself, and you can toggle the uh, the switch on and off. In fact, if uh, we look at that, you know, you can do set state and uh, and toggle it on and off. But if we have a quick look at my my automations um, for driving this. So it's hopefully nothing too surprising. Uh, we'll have a look. So I have inverter turn fans on when the inverter temperature reaches 37 degrees. So all I do when the inverter temperature hits 37 degrees is my trigger. The action is turn on the Shelly switch, which in turn turns on the fans. And I also start a timer, uh, which I've called 20 minute fan run time. Um, so nothing um, too fancy going on there and then I have two more automations which is I turn the fan off when the temperature gets below 30 degrees or I turn the fan off when my 20 minute timer expires and it changes from active to idle uh, if we go back to my main dashboard I can have a quick look at the inverter temperature I can see so overnight when I'm charging my battery so this morning at six o'clock in the morning I started to put some charge into the batteries because I knew the, the forecast today wasn't going to be particularly good in fact it's absolutely abysmal if you can see um, my solar forecast says today it's um, it was supposed to be four kilowatts I don't think I've produced one kilowatt yet all day and it's now half three in the afternoon so um, yeah, put some, some grid charge into my batteries at six o'clock this morning. We can see the inverter temperature quickly ramps up to 37 degrees, at which point the fans kick in. And we can see that the temperature drops down to 30 degrees uh, shortly afterwards. The fans cut out and it ramps up again. Um, on a, a longer charge, um, sort of cycle if you like we'll see this happening four or five times throughout the uh, the charge cycle where you know the, the inverter is hitting 37 degrees and i'm dropping it back down to 30 again um, as the fans only have a, a single speed and literally they're on or they're off i can't really regulate the temperature more closely than that but i'm pretty happy that you know um, i'm managing to keep the the, the inverter temperature below 37 degrees uh, it'll be more interesting, obviously, in the summer when the uh, the ambient temperature increases a bit. We'll see how it manages. I might need to tweak my automations a little bit then. But um, for the moment, yeah, I'm pretty happy with with how that's working. And um, yeah, it was was really easy to set up. So hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully you found the video of some interest. Maybe some of you with some uh, some better weather might look to do something similar on your on your own and prolong the life of uh, of your inverter. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.